His arrival means they must leave. She's down to two kittens now, and she can't risk losing another one. She's about to embark on the first leg of a journey that will take the family away from the only home she's ever known. The house where she was born and where she grew up. She gathers the young kittens and together they leave the old house for the last time, never to return. They make their way to the outskirts of the village. They're heading towards the forest, a place she's been many times before. But it's a strange and unfamiliar world for the kittens. It's slow going. The wood is full of huge obstacles for the small cats. Sticking close together, she makes sure they're never far behind. And gradually they start to find their feet as they cross the streams and rivers following her lead. Even the thinnest branch makes a useful bridge. The forest is full of creatures they've never seen before. A pine marten just emerging from its tree trunk nest. After dark, the forest changes hands as the nocturnal creatures of the wood emerge. It's the domain of our lone wolf, a stealthy nocturnal hunter. His sight and sense of smell provide a crucial sensory picture of this cluttered world. He moves silently through the forest, listening for anything that might lead to a meal. telltale sound of a wild boar breaks the silence. Now he'll use his natural stealth to pursue it, moving silently through the tangled undergrowth. The wolf can sense this is a lone boar. He won't have to miss out again. So he picks up the pace and begins his relentless pursuit. This forest is a place where the natural balance of predator and prey has been re-established. The natural predators are the only hunters left here now. It may be a radioactive food chain, but they are at the top of it. It's not just the human evacuation that keeps so many wild creatures here safe from the hunter's bullet but the knowledge that the flesh of these creatures is contaminated by radioactivity. It's a bizarre but highly effective deterrent. As dawn begins to break through the trees and drives the shadows away, the wolf loses the advantage of darkness. He's lost his kill to his rivals, the bears. With these two around, nothing is safe. Daylight is also the best time for the cat to move with her family. Her kittens are far too vulnerable at night. 
She may have hunted in the forest many times, but at heart, she's still a house cat. And she's looking for a new home for them. But the temptation of shelter the other side of the field means crossing open ground with two kittens. These open stretches are patrolled, as always, by birds of prey. Once again, the kittens run the gauntlet. But this time, all make it safely to the other side. Once they're in, they realize this is something far bigger than they're used to. It's a cattle shed, part of an old collective farm. These sheds once housed hundreds of cattle. Now they're shelter for the growing rodent population. And an ideal place for her to keep up the training regime for her still inexperienced hunters. All this new activity has attracted some attention. They're trespassing in someone else's territory. The owl has been watching the cats from the moment they set foot in here. Suddenly the cats aren't the hunters anymore. The kittens are in grave danger. So once again, she gets them out of harm's way. Back deep within the wood, the wolf is recovering from his night of hunting. But he still needs a mate to start his own family with. His dreams are full of expectation. And while he sleeps, the scent of a female wolf hangs in the air and begins to stir his senses. When he wakes, the scent is still there. It's stronger. Now he's tracking again, not to hunt this time, but to find a female. Back by the edge of the lake, the cats have found somewhere else they might be able to make into a new home. The kittens are already exploring inside. It's a stimulating environment, a maze of rafters for playing and honing their skills in climbing and agility. And they seem to have reached here just in time. Outside, a storm is brewing. But like everything else here, this one brings more than rain. First, the wind picks up. These winds carry radioactive plutonium as they gather up dust from the contaminated ground. When the rain starts to fall, it brings this radioactivity back to Earth again. And it sticks to every surface it drenches. As the storm intensifies, thunder and lightning drown out the relentless beating rain. But at least the cats are safe in here, as safe as houses. It doesn't rain here for weeks on end. The wood becomes dry like a tinderbox, and a lightning strike can easily start an inferno. Their new home is short-lived. The cats have escaped with their lives, but they're still homeless and winter will soon be on its way. It's another setback in her search for a home, somewhere she can settle her kittens before it's time for her to leave them on their own for good. For now, she'll have to keep the family on the move. As they start to make their way further along the banks of the river, they come across yet another abandoned scene from Chernobyl's catastrophic past. The rusting remains of what appears to be an old harbor. Many of these boats were used in the cleanup operation after the explosion.